Number three, Sue Kedgley. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. A question for the Minister of Broadcasting. Can he confirm that he has told Radio order, New Zealand order, that it's funding... Order. Excuse me a moment. I, my, uh, my question did not start that way. I may have an incorrect and not a final copy of the questions for I'll answer, but uh, I'd ask the member just to check she is uh, reading the question correctly, asking Can, the question correctly. Thank you, Mr Speaker. You're absolutely correct. Uh, I will rephrase that. A question for the Minister of Broadcasting. Has he told Radio New Zealand that its funding will be frozen for a number of years? If so, how many? The Honourable Maurice Williamson. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Broadcasting, the Minister has made it clear to the Radio New Zealand Board that, like a number of other government agencies, Radio New Zealand must live within its current baselines. Sue Kedgley. Point of order, the Honourable Dr Russell Norman. Um, the, the, the Minister has had this question for some time. It's a pretty straightforward question. Has the funds been frozen? If so, for how long? There was no attempt to address either part of the question. I, I appreciate the point the member is making because the question is on notice. It does ask, if so, for how many, uh, for how many years? And I would ask the Minister to respond, because the answer could be interpreted as meaning indefinitely, so I'd ask the Minister to respond uh, to that part of the question. Well, Mr Speaker, as uh, many members of this House will know, funding uh, changes year by year. However, for the foreseeable two to three year baseline out years, Radio New Zealand has been asked to live within that baseline. Sue Kedgley. Why is he ignoring the advice of the Board and Chief Executive of Radio New Zealand that current funding levels are already unsustainable, that any freeze in funding will undermine the quality and standards of Radio New Zealand and its charter? Honourable Morris Williams. Mr Speaker, uh, quite the opposite. And in fact, if I can quote from a letter to Dr Coleman from Christine Grice, the chairman, dated 21 January, that is just last month, Ms Grice says, the board is satisfied that the funding gap will be bridged to meet the requirements you laid out at our December meeting as being the bottom line requirements to enable Radio New Zealand to manage within the present funding over the next two to three years while meeting its statutory and charter obligations on a sustainable basis and be ready for this implementation on the 31st of March. Suki, oh, beg your pardon, David Garrett. Uh, supplementary to the Minister, does the Minister know how many people listen to Radio New Zealand through the radio ratings, or is he, like the rest of New Zealand taxpayers who fund it, kept in the dark about listener numbers? The Honourable Morris Williamson. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Broadcasting, I don't actually... Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister, I don't actually have those uh, ratings, but I think they're very well publicised. Sue Kedgley. Isn't a freeze in baseline funding really a cut when other costs for rent, transmission, power and so forth are all going up? The Honourable Morris Williamson. Mr Speaker, no, it's not. Actually, many government organisations find a number of various ways that they can make savings, savings they should have been making over many years, and those savings can allow for at least the same, if not even a better, product to be delivered over time within those baselines. Sue Kedgley. Why did he give Radio New Zealand Board an ultimatum, change their mindset and adopt a more commercial approach or else in his letter to the Chair of Radio New Zealand Board on the 2nd of February? The Honourable Mr. Morris Speaker, Williamson. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Broadcasting, the Minister hasn't given any clear direction to Radio New Zealand about what they must do to achieve the goal, all he has asked them to do is to make sure they can work within their baselines and to reply to him in detail about how it is that they will achieve it. So all the rumour mongering and scare that the Minister has directed them to cut FM or directed them to start getting sponsorship is not correct. Sue so supplementary, yes. Uh, well, what did he mean then when he uh, demanded that the board change their mindset and look at alternative re revenue models, in other words, adopt a more commercial approach, when Radio New Zealand's legislation says explicitly it must be free of advertising 
and sponsorship, and it must remain commercial free. The Honourable Morris Williams. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister, sir, I'm, I'm first of all sort of quite perplexed about why the questioning carries on, given that I've read a letter from the Chair of Radio New Zealand who says we can deliver all our statutory and charter obligations from within the current baselines. So what it is the member is on about, I'm really not sure. Claire Curran. The Minister. What level of cuts in programming at Radio New Zealand is he prepared to accept? The Honourable Morris, please. Speaker, again, I will refer the member to the statements the Minister has made. He wants Radio New Zealand to look at their service and their delivery and look at how they can make changes, as so many other government departments and agencies have been asked to do, to find out where there are areas that can be made more efficient, that can deliver things better and more cost effectively, but without reducing their ability to deliver on both their statutory and their charter obligations. Sir, I would have thought Labor would have thought that was an absolutely perfectly natural thing to do with any government agency. Sue Kedgley. Does he agree that some of the options for cost savings that Radio New Zealand has been forced to consider, such as reducing its regional news coverage, will undermine the quality of Radio New Zealand programmes and its charter? The Honourable Morris Williams. Speaker, on behalf of the Minister, I'm once again quite gobsmacked. The Radio New Zealand have not been forced to consider anything. They've been asked to come back with a plan about how it is they will deliver the requirements under the Act in this Charter within their baselines. They'll make the decision about what they do in operation. They are not being directed to do any specific thing. Sue Kedgley. Has he discussed Radio New Zealand's funding with any chief executives from private sector radio, such as the former MediaWorks chief executive Brent Impey, who was campaigning last year for cuts to Radio New Zealand. The Honourable Morris Mr. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Broadcasting, because I am answering on behalf of a Minister, it would be impossible for me to answer that question. Question number four, oh, point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Mr. Speaker, uh, in order to assist the Minister of Education with her answer to question eight, I seek leave to table um, a document which is an email invitation to Andrew O of the now abolished Arangi School Board of Trustees inviting him to a webinar to be held on the 8th of March. This is, a, this is an invitation... The it's, it's an invitation to uh, someone who's been tossed off the, the board source of trustees. this document is... It, Andrew, Andrew O, it's an email. It's an email. And which he, was sent to him on her behalf. Leavers, leavers sought... Order. Order, order, order. No, if the member wants to, make, uh, wants to raise a point of order, he's welcome to do so. Uh, if he wants to clarify... Maybe I, I see that the House is confused. Could the member clarify more exactly what this document no, is? No, it's one, it's one sent on behalf of the Minister for one of the ministerial approved training sessions uh, to Andrew O, who, is, who used to be a member of the Board of Trustees of Aurangi School. Order, She's order. sending it to people member, to an abolished school. Order. Is the member saying this is a document sent by the Ministry of Education? Yes. A document from the Ministry of Education. Leave us sought to table that document from the Ministry of Education. Is there any objection? There is no objection. Question number four, the Honourable David Cunliffe. 